Hi, Shagun. 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 Hi, well, you're always on your phone. So what do you understand by information system? I don't know what that is. Why don't you tell me? Ooh, okay. Ooh, okay, fine. Information system, it's a medium that accepts. When I mean accepts, I mean collecting data, storing them, and then processing them for information purposes. Like your phone, for instance, is an operating system. I mean, information systems, sorry. So, so, information systems are used in our day-to-day -day lives. They're used by organizations, governments, literally everyone makes use of information systems. Since the first information system, which was a large-scale mechanical information system, developed by Herman Hollerith in time for the 1980 USA census, information systems have come a very long way. That machine by Herman Hollery served as an inspiration for the now electronic information systems. A decision of, decision of the organization on whether to buy or to build, to develop or to procure an information system is very, very crucial and very important. Let's explore more on systems procurement and development. Innovations often spring from frustrations and problems to be solved. Information needs of the organization are examined and projects to meet those needs are proactively identified. The system's development life cycle, also known as SDLC, is a conceptual model used in project management that describes the stages involved in the building of an information system, the development per se. The system's development system is a process that begins with planning and goes through several phases until the system has been implemented and ends in its maintenance period. The system's development cycle traditionally consisted of five stages, which has now been increased to seven. Increase in the steps have helped systems analysts to clearly define actions to meet their specific goals. The system's development life cycle consists of seven seven stages which are planning, systems analysis, systems design, development, integration and testing, implementation and operation and maintenance. Development. Firstly, we have three different types of methods or strategies for software development, namely the waterfall method, the iterative method and the agile method. Firstly, the waterfall method is a sequential method that follows the software development life cycle, in which one activity begins immediately and activity has ended. In this method, the programmers think about the time and resources available and they develop the information system accordingly. However, the iterative method, which is a different method from the waterfall method, is a method that focuses on the time and resources available and allows the programmers to focus on these budgeted resources to develop the information system due to fast-changing business environments. In complex software development approaches, various organizations use different methods in developing and maintaining their information system. Now, the question is, how do they decide on which strategy or, or method first thing to consider is the type of project, of, of, is the type of project involved? Now, is the project a huge project, a time-consuming project, a self-defined project, or a small project? This is this all these questions involved will define or we are factors in place that will lead to an organization in making the decision on which method or strategy to use in acquiring us or developing their information system. Now let's assume a project is clear, is clear, stable and easy to define. A what the waterfall method or approach is suitable for this project. Also, let's try to look into consideration. Let's assume also that a project can be launched in different phases. Huh? The iterative method or approach can be used in this instance. Now, let's also look at it. If a business huh, has, a, has a project and wants to launch a project, 
and the business as needs are changing at a various like a very long project and the needs of the business are changing constantly very well that means the business can use an agile agile method not the waterfall method oh. because now the other factors to, cons to be considered is the organization's culture you know many organizations find it difficult or uncomfortable to change methods slash chat or strategy because since they've been using the waterfall method for years now, I want to leave a question out to you guys. Which, as an organization, will it be, which method will you prefer to use? Will you prefer to use the waterfall method, the agile method, or the iterative method? Thank you. Organization can either decide to build or buy software for their business activities. The majority of organizations prefer the buy strategy to custom development because of the factors involved, such as strategy, value, overall cost, time needed for the deployment, and the availability of IT. The major pros and cons associated with custom system development and prepackaged software is that prepackaged software requires shorter implementation time compared to custom system development, which takes longer time. And also, prepackaged software and do processes using the industry best practices compared to custom system development, which which goes about in-house maintenance and compliance. When a business entity decides to buy an in-house information system, there are various steps involved. First off, the business users should ensure the landscape of the prepackaged software must fit the organizational needs. And also, a request for information, which is RFI, will be sent to various viable vendors. If the response is positive, then the committee will develop a request for proposal, which is the RFP, which is an information system which is an invitation to software companies to submit a formal proposal about the detailed description of their product services. I'll be talking on the importance of human elements in system development and procurement. The human is an essential component of the system and it is our responsibility to ensure that the system is built in such a way that will accommodate the characteristics of the user population that will maintain, operate and support the system. One factor effort are required in at least five of the six major phases of system development. That is, we have the system planning, project design, um, production test, evaluation and operation. Each of these stages introduce behavioral question that must be answered if the system is to be designed to affect system development and procurement partly because people from different parts of the organization work together in cross-functional team as a result of this communication crisis may arise and in order to curb this crisis and all senior managers are expected to implement strategic value and also to imply and also to inspire the employees to work together in this presentation we discuss systems development and procurement starting from system development life cycle and we also discuss the systems development methods and strategies and compared software development approaches explanation of how organizations decide whether to buy or to reduce we hope you found our presentation enlightening and enjoyable. Thank, Thank you. you.